Dr. Thompson, pastor of Central Presbyterian Church, and your host for this edition of Austin Faith Dialogue. And today we focus upon a word which is much used, sometimes abused, but which always represents a necessary dimension in everyone's life, and that's the term spirituality. Persons of all faith traditions or even of no faith tradition recognize that to be a human is to be a spiritual being. And today we're privileged to have persons who are well positioned to lead us in probing the meaning of spirituality and the means of finding spiritual direction. Dr. Miriam Burke is a practicing psychotherapist in Austin and is also a certified spiritual director. Dr. Will Spong is also a professional counselor who is helping establish a center in the Episcopal Seminary of the Southwest here in Austin. And we welcome you both. And uh, I'd like to first of all say, well, I believe before the show you were telling me that this is a, a program that's called Caring, a Counseling, Pastoral Care, and Spiritual Formation. <clears throat> and I'd like to ask you if you give the viewers a little bit of a sense of how you, how you train people to be spiritual directors. Very slowly. The, um, the, the effort to train people in spiritual direction is sort of to get folks in touch with the notion that there are things that are bigger and greater and uh, that are part of the human condition that they can't control. And we call that God, or we call that higher power, or we call that a sense of destiny, or we call that whatever. <coughs> but basically, it's an attempt to move into unexplained territories of of God or transcendence or matters of that type. Well, now that's what <laughs> seminary is all about. I mean, <clears throat> the way you describe it, it sounds like anything you do in the seminary is in relation to that. What, what makes the spiritual well, I formation? I think this is, a, this is a very specific focus that has to do with, with something that's at the very heart of theological education, but as often is the case, theological education is consumed with so many things that to really attempt to go deeply into this subject, uh, as strange as it may seem, uh, isn't always done, isn't always the case. Okay. <clears throat> and there's something, it seems to me, about the fact that you give people um, not just academic knowledge, but experience. Uh, you're you're hope, hoping to help open them up to the experience that they, they would be sharing with others. Well, essentially, ministry as such is experience, and and it's sort of like teaching people to have the eyes of faith to be able to look at what they see in ways that are essentially not very comfortable. Uh, you know, for example, we might go to a movie like, say, the movie The Grand Canyon, and, and it's about uh, people looking for meaning, but it's really not about God. It's, it's helping people to understand that there's a force in life that means a tremendous amount to them, but we have very little experience in defining it. Mm -hmm. And so what we're trying to do <laughs> is, is sort of encourage the eyes of faith to see it and All to right. see it uh, mm -hmm. in new ways. And I think, the, Miriam, wouldn't you say that, the, I mean, like Jesus is talking about having eyes but not seeing and ears but not hearing, that spirituality is suddenly becoming conscious of your consciousness, is that... That your, certainly is one way to say it, yes. How, how else would you give definition to what <coughs> spirituality or spiritual direction is? Spiritual direction for me is helping someone discover how God's at work in their life and being really uh, able to name, help them name mm -hmm. the very things that are happening to them and to see where it's taking them that they might not have expected. Okay. Now, you're a, a counselor, a, a therapist. You work with people about their problems and their feelings and and yet you're also uh, the spiritual director. What's, what's the difference between those roles for you? Well, for me, uh, the difference really is that when I'm doing therapy, I feel that I have a responsibility to know something about this person and what they can do about it. Mm -hmm. And so I help to do that. In spiritual direction, I think we both stand under God, watching to see how God is going to act, and then helping to define it and discern it. So um, you... Um, You've, you've been doing this for how long? Mm, I guess for about, um, let's see, about 24 years. Okay. Well, you're, you're just not 
fresh into the field. I That's mean, you, right. You, I've been doing it a while. You've been around the block several times. Exactly. And how long have you been working on this, Will? This particular well, I've been teaching at the seminary for 24 years. Okay. Uh, and has that been mostly in the field of uh, pastoral care and counseling and more recently in the spiritual yes, system? Uh, yes, I really do believe that there are three points to the same kind of responsibility. But it does take different kinds of, uh, of uh, skills. It really does. Mm -hmm. So you would confirm the, the, the difference, even though there's be some overlap, I'm, I'm sure, in terms of people's right. feelings. I mean, you're in your counseling, people are telling you their feelings, they're pouring their hearts out, uh, or you're trying to help them discern what's going on within them. The experience of God is full of awe and wonder and, and contrition, or, I mean, all, uh, a variety, wouldn't that be one of the parallels or the overlaps between the people? But you're saying you, you, you're, you're just looking at it differently, you're experiencing it differently. And also looking at it differently and also inclined to label it differently. Uh -huh. In other words, I, and actually I think it's different phenomena. In other words, there is a real inner life of the person, which is a very important part. And I think that then the way the inner person is related to God is another facet. Uh -huh. And that's what I think of the spiritual direction. Okay. Now, I need to ask you a very personal question. And that is, how do you get certified as a spiritual director? I mean, does the heaven open up and a certificate handed down at some point? I'm, <laughs> I, 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 yeah, I can see you get certified as a doctor and you go to the, you know, to the whatever examining board there is and they can tell that you cut or give pills right. But what about, how do you get so certified and recognized? Well, I was really surprised when I was identified as a certified spiritual director because my main work has been in the experience of spiritual direction from Jesuits. Uh -huh. And in my work with them, I've done eight-day retreats and a 30-day retreat, and then I've done some class work. But mainly, they believe that the, the tradition is so powerful that when you've been placed in that tradition for that length of time, uh -huh. that you automatically have come <coughs> under the experience of God in a specific way. You've discovered Jesus in a specific way. Okay, so in other words, anything that you get in the way of recognition for mm -hmm. spiritual direction is that you put in so many hours and, and had a certain kind of training or exposure, but it doesn't mean that you're suddenly more holy than somebody else. That's certainly right. All right. In fact, one of the things it does is expose mm -hmm. and how much there is yet to learn and how mysterious God is above us all. All right. I, uh, I think that one of the other things is viewers look in and they say, well, now, isn't that something, spiritual direction or spirituality is a word that we're hearing all the time. Um, I mean, in, I know in 12-step uh, groups it's used a lot. Uh, in the New Age uh, location I'm very in here in Austin, uh, this uh, uh, new forms of uh, faith expression, <coughs> spirituality is identified with that. But spirituality has been identified with the Jesuits over a period of time. So all of a sudden, there's this old term that's in a new setting. And it seems like it's an expression of people looking for something or seeking something. And will, how are they going to find it? Well, I think, uh, I think we need to recognize that maybe we're being taught by, maybe we're being taught by people who are telling us that there's something that they need, which they're not finding. Mm -hmm. And it would seem to me that spirituality is certainly in. You hear it all the time. But I think we need to be responsible for the extent to which it's in because maybe we haven't been doing what we should have been doing mm -hmm. uh, all these years. And, and, and by we, you mean the organized religion? Well, uh, you, know, you often hear people say that uh, there's a fundamental difference between spirituality and religion. And there are a lot of people that are very happy with spirituality and very down on religion mm -hmm. right now. And right. some of it has to do with, uh, with uh, feeling that the church has become so uh, self-serving and so political and so everything else that it sort of lost its birthright. Mm -hmm. And so spirituality, you see it everywhere you go. Uh, and you see a lot of the resistance toward organized religion in terms of, of finding that center again. Mm -hmm. In other words, um, 
the organized religion can get in the way of spirituality as at the same time that it could be a vehicle for that depending on how people do their 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 faith experience well let me give a simple illustration it would seem to me that one of the problems with organized religion is the certainty that organized religion has in proclaiming that they are right about what they believe mm -hmm. and spirituality has a sense to it that one's experience with God while directed cannot be uh, put forward as though this is right this is wrong uh, territoriality in religious faith is really a, a peculiar uh, thing indeed okay Miriam we have just a minute or so for the break can you add on to anything that Will said there in terms of how organized religion helps or hinders it seems to me that a lot of it has to do with where a person is in their own human development because organized religion is very helpful while you're still developing forms mm -hmm. but when it comes to the actual essence and the expression of the essence Sometimes churches uh, continue to stay with the form and don't move into the, into the essence of it. Mm -hmm. Okay, sometimes. Yes. But okay. sometimes they do move into the essence of yes. it. Yes, and that, of course, is a very exciting combination. To me, that's when spirituality and spiritual direction are at their best, uh -huh. when it happens within the local church. Yeah. Well, it, it, uh, when we come back from our break, I, I think we ought to talk about where, where we maybe have seen some examples of that. Okay. And in, in your own, in, uh, as you work with individuals, the difference that coming to it in a, um, from a spirituality standpoint as distinct from a counseling standpoint has made a difference. And uh, I think we can see already that you can, you can have the call or the heart for spirituality, but somehow without some training or guidance that uh, that could even become destructive and yet to have all this training but not have the heart for it is to, uh, is to be empty. Right. And um, so those are the kinds of things that we'll come back to in the second half of the show. So hope you folks stay tuned. We're glad to have you here and we'll be back soon to probe spiritual direction. Serving Austin means serving you. That has always been the primary goal of Austin Metropolitan Ministries. We are religion in action through the work of these organizations. Each plays a key role in making the capital city a better place to live, but we can't do it alone. Do you have some spare time, talents, or any resources that you can share? If you do, please call AMM at 472-7627 because serving Austin means serving you. Welcome back to Austin Faith Dialogue, and today we are probing the issues of finding spiritual direction with a couple of folks who have had experience and training in this uh, discipline, and yet it's more than a discipline. We were, at the time that we uh, left Miriam Burke and Will Spahn, saying that you can, um, you can say go to Jesuit retreats, the Catholic Church has had that tradition and others. Uh, the, the, the Protestant church has come along and people of other faith traditions have come along and offered kind of um, uh, the, the training or, or, or study in this, and yet it takes more than that. Give us, uh, give us examples, though, of where you can think, Will, uh, in your um, work with seminarians or people as you've uh, worked with in the community, where the whole... Um, the discipline of spiritual direction for you has made a difference and how you've seen people responding differently in that role rather than just your being a, in a counseling role. Let me put it this way. It would seem to me that, that people need to have permission to feel feelings without believing that their feelings are bad. And some of those feelings have to do with God. For example, um, I recall a mother who was attending to the death of her 13-year-old child with uh, an insidious form of spinal cancer. And the friends at home wrote her a letter and said, <coughs> uh, if you believe that God can move a mountain, he can. And if you believe that God will heal your child, 
than he can. And then the child died a week later. And the mother added to her own grief that somehow or another she was responsible by being a kind of uh, an incomplete follower, that she was sort of responsible for the death of her child. Now, for me, that would be an abusive thing to say to somebody about, about God, mm -hmm. uh, that God is in the business of killing off people's kids. Uh, now, those kinds of ideas sometimes are sent forward with an attempt to be helpful, but they, in fact, are not helpful. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And can uh, actually be destructive to a person's faith. You bet. Uh, but you see, once again, if a person is insistent that they have it, that they've got, they've got God in their definition. If they've got it, then what they can do is they can wreak havoc with somebody who feels guilty if they don't believe what they believe. All right, all right. Have you got any examples that come to mind? Well, one of the things I was thinking is that uh, a spiritual direction, it seems to me, is really important as a possibility of focusing on the relationship with God. And when I become convinced that everyone has their own possibility of, of relationship. My main task is to help them understand that relationship and to begin to experience it. So I don't expect to be directing them specifically at those moments other than to say, have you really met Jesus yet? Have you talked with God? <coughs> have you discovered the relationship? It makes me wonder, have you had experiences like this? Well, I, uh, <coughs> I tell you that uh, <clears throat> my work as a minister, I, over, over 36 years, has been one in which I have increasingly become aware of how I've been called to be a spiritual director. And at the time that I studied for the ministry, was we, we were talking about theology and biblical history and so on, but the practice of, of that was not in our era at the heart of our training. And since that time, I began to be aware of how that's the name of the game in, in church life and in, in, in a pastor's life. And if you don't have something going on spiritually within yourself, you know, what, uh, what do you have to offer? And, that you're, and you're not in it to, to pronounce, you know, uh, something that is absolute truth. It, it, you're there to be with somebody, to, to mutually discover God. And, and one of the examples that I've had is that um, I've had folks say, like I think it was brought to mind by Will, what you were saying, a woman who was uh, in great pain in the hospital, and she was praying, God, take away this pain. And uh, as I was with her and she, she asked for that, I said, I, I'm, I'm not sure <laughs> I can pray that with you, but I know one thing I can pray with you, is God help me bear that pain. And and that made sense to her, and, and, and she, in fact, was the one to inspire that uh, response. And that's a different angle, it just shifts the yeah, point really of view is. some. Mm -hmm. And um, it really is. And uh, the, 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 the notion is clear that, uh, that if, if we could, we would, we would get God to make our lives worry free. Mm -hmm. um, part of the process of being alive and dealing with the things that we, we must deal with is to recognize that we've got some responsibilities and that it's just like it's just like I love my kids, but my kids wouldn't expect me to live their life for them. But that doesn't mean my love is impotent. My mm -hmm. love is very real. But we have an amazing tendency to presume that God is going to fix things. Yeah. And yeah. what you're saying is that that part of the task of spiritual direction is to help people to live in the unfixable moments of their life. All right. Unfixable moments. Mary. Okay. And when I think about unfixable moments, I think that many times they are declared unfixable. And often they are. And they do need to learn to somehow have the presence of God with them in those unfixable moments. I also find that sometimes we discover that God is going to fix them beyond our expectation. Mm -hmm. And that, to me, just becomes one of the miracles that has to be acknowledged. Okay, so in a way, the, the openness to what may happen is that yeah. <clears throat> your prayers may not be answered in the way that you're asking, right. but that God responds in some way. Right. And sometimes God r responds in spades. I mean, you're, yeah. oh my word, my prayers have been answered, now what do I do? 
And uh, have you ever had anybody say that? To I you? have. In fact, very <laughs> recently, I had somebody who was able to say, uh, "I've just had a, my examination and discovered that the cancer that I had, there's no sign of it." And I'm just wondering, how am I going to live now? It's so exciting because I'm still prepared not to live in this world. And at the same time, the word that I've gotten is that I might have many more years ahead of me. Uh -huh. Well, that, that, uh, that means that you have to get busy and <laughs> exactly. start doing your life differently. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. I want to tell you one, uh, one other example that uh, in terms of, you know, the pastor is asked to pray with people all the time. And... I've discovered that uh, one of the things that is kind of overlaps with counseling this standpoint, and I'll say to folks, what would you like for me to pray for in your behalf? And that, that has them be, be able to verbalize and express what it is that uh, they, their deepest need is, and, uh, and if they don't know what it is to help move in at least that direction. And I had one couple that came in that had tried so hard to have children, and they said, please pray that we might, and the woman said, that I might get pregnant. And I said, I can't do that. I mean, God is in charge of that kind of thing. And, but I can pray that you'll have a wonderful sex life, that you'll just enjoy yourself. And in a sense, forget it. And within a month, they, uh, she was pregnant. <laughs> and they gave me credit for that. Yeah. <laughs> well, there was an interesting story. I remember when I was in seminary, I was yeah. having a very hard time understanding church history or something, and I went to my advisor and I said, gosh, I'm having really trouble with this, and I've prayed and prayed and prayed about it, and he said to me, maybe you should spend less time on your knees and more time at your desk, mm -hmm. which was a good counsel. Uh -huh. I uh -huh. yeah. uh -huh. So I can get set the, the our responsibility and, and God's love for us uh, mm -hmm. are two different things sometimes. Mm -hmm. Spirituality also means being on your feet, uh, praying with your if you're in a, in a say, uh, back in civil rights days, I remember Martin Luther King was defining spirituality as bearing witness in public. But, he, but sometimes when he gets so discouraged, he'd have to go alone and just find himself getting refilled in some way. Would you say spirituality is a broader definition than just, you know, reading your Bible and, and uh, that kind of thing? Right? I think it's a wonderful realization that it is both an inner life which grows and an external expression of that inner life. And the more we have things happen inside, the more we're going to be expressing it on the outside. Mm -hmm. and I think Martin Luther King was a great example of that. Mm -hmm. Another thing to add to that would be that it is probably a mistake to presume that, that a spiritual life protects you from what's going on. Uh, uh, to be in a spiritual relationship with God means that you must attend to things like poverty, racism, marginal people. Uh, we have some responsibilities not to hide in spirituality. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And see, that's what I think really is the, ex the extension of the internal shift. Like, I was inclined to do that so much on my own effort before I really came to understand that God is a power that wants to do it through me, and that to me is part of what makes the difference. And why I so often will say to people, you may need to spend some time with the inner world mm -hmm. so that you become empowered to do these external mm -hmm. things that are in very mm -hmm. deep need. Mm -hmm. And maybe we need to remember that Martin Luther King was a pastor. That's right. Right, right. Exactly. And, um, and one of the things I've had occasion to learn are the various dimensions of, of spiritual practice that if you, if you have some exposure to uh, a, a certain kind of training, you discover there's, there's conversational prayer, there's meditative prayer, in which is more of a listening kind of thing. There is uh, contemplation, which is even a, yet a different approach. Can, can you just give us the components, uh, as you see it, as, as what makes up spiritual direction practice? It's funny because what my mind went to was the Jesuit format that says that all temptations come to persons across three different levels. One is the child. Mm -hmm. And one is the um, secret lover, hmm. so the petulant child, the secret lover, and the uh, sort of executive that we're trying to please. And that we would look at those things that tempt us, we would find that they fall into one of those three categories. In my own experience, to discover that my discomfort, 
uh, with the way a professor was doing a particular class had to do with the petulant child in me. Mm -hmm. It was a real surprise. I wanted him to do what I wanted. Okay. And he wasn't going to do that. And uh, to Tell find us about the lover sign. <laughs> the secret lover is anything that you want to hide that you're very, very attached to. Mm -hmm. And goodness knows, probably all of us have at least one or two of those uh, possibilities. And the executive is... Uh, and the executive is somebody that I'm trying to please so that I can get where I want to get. All right. Okay, well, we could spend a whole program, I think, <laughs> just on that. <laughs> Tell us about other dimensions. I mean, aren't dreams part of this, too, Will? I mean... Uh, I'm sure they are, but... I'm sure somebody else will have to tell you how they are. <laughs> yeah. Uh, it's not, it would, it, sometimes it seems so simple. Uh, it, it's kind of like if, if, if God loves me mm -hmm. and God loves you, then you and I are family. Mm -hmm. And that if God loves me somehow or another, that is in a marvelous piece of, of relationship beauty to have. But it also means that I have some responsibility for my relationship with you as well. Yeah. Well, you know, part of my sense of uh, responsibility with, with people in the church is they, I, I, for instance, had a woman who came and talked about a dream that she had. And, and I, I said, well, listen, I'm not a psychotherapist that does dream analysis. But I do know that in the Bible you've got uh, the story of Joseph and the dreams and other dreams, factors, and, and that just to, to encourage people to be aware of what's going on and, uh, and, and, and they can discern something of their own meaning from that. Or sometimes they, they will come and say that, um, I know one individual said, I was walking by a, a, a river and all of a sudden there were 300 fish that jumped over the, the surface and I just watched that and, and I looked beneath the surface and there uh, were a bunch of them and her perceptions were changing. She was stopping and noticing things. And she says, Does, is God telling me something through that? I said, you know, I'm, I'm not the, uh, the guru that can pronounce on this, but obviously it meant uh, much to you. And it means much to us to have you folks here today. Miriam Burke, Thank you. Will Spong. We'll hope to have you back again sometime. Thank you. Enjoy being here. And we hope that you folks will join us again in our next edition of Austin Faith Dialogue. I'm Richard Thompson, and peace be with you.